Hi everybody, Daryl here. All right, I got a, I don't know if I've shown you this shirt before, but as I'm sucking in, I think it says, sorry I'm late, I didn't want to come. Just a little bit of my personality there. Um, this one might be a long one, so. Um, I want to talk about uh, climate change. I said in other videos that I would talk about climate change. Um, and I want to do it from a biblical perspective. Um, I do not accept the man-made version uh, that is put out there in a political form of climate change. Um, I do believe in climate change. I believe that climates change. Um, and I do not fear the rhetoric that comes from people who are, are making a super amount of money off of this idea of climate change. Um, that we hear in the media and uh, by uh, scientists and ex-politicians who are making a lot of money off of this. Anyway, um, I don't want to go down that route, uh, but I do want to talk about from a biblical perspective. Um, my humble opinion, which you don't have to believe, uh, of, of climate change. What I see in the Bible and what I see from the Bible and I look out in the world and I say, yes, the Bible's correct and it's climate change, all right? So I got four events of climate change that the Bible talks about and they're big events. They're not little ones, they're big events that the Bible talks about that involves climate change. So uh, I'm gonna read a lot of verses just so that we, we get an idea that uh, when, when Christians join themselves up with uh, secular organizations that are trying to promote climate change, I would just like them to just uh, consider and stop for a moment what you're supporting and what you're connecting yourself up with. Um, they're not the movements you think they are. Um, so I am just thought I'd present, maybe if people don't know uh, what the Bible might view uh, and through my eyes, climate change. All right, so here's a biblical view of climate change. The Bible says in the beginning, and so here we have here is a climate in the beginning. There is a climate in the beginning. <laughs> uh, Genesis 1 says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, not man. Man did not do that. Um, God did. Uh, he created the heavens and the earth. That's a lot of creating to do. So, I think he created them, he, it belongs to him. All right. Uh, then it says in Genesis 1, it says, God blessed them, this is Adam and Eve, and God said to them, be fruitful, be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So we have that uh, man, Adam and Eve have been given the responsibility that God put them over the earth. That's uh, quite the trust, I think so. Um, people always look at the word rule as if it's always a negative word. Uh, but can't you be a good ruler? Well, I think you can. Um, and subdue it. I don't, still don't see a problem with that. Uh, God created the earth for us, for us. Um, and he also, just a little side note, he says, fill the earth. Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. And then just a little side note about overpopulation. Um, God told us to fill the earth. And I haven't heard from him uh, when that's full yet. Just because some famous people or very rich people believe that the earth is full, it's too many people there, it's overpopulated. Um, I haven't heard that from God yet. And so that, uh, that command is still there. Go fill the earth. He'll let us know when it's too much. And he'll put a stop to it. Now, when I say climate change, what I, what I don't mean is pollution. Um, I, I, to me, they're different. Because pollution is something that you can deal locally. You can pick it up. Um, you can deal with it uh, as best we can. Um, so, yes, if there's garbage, pick it up. Uh, if there's a river that is polluted, let's try to clean it up. Um, so that part I do agree with. But when it comes to the climate is if we can control by our means as mankind, that we can control the earth and control our environment, 
um, I, I, I think that's foolish. I don't think we can. And plus, as we read here, uh, we're not in control. God is. But yet, there's still a responsibility for us not to pollute rivers, of course, and to not pollute oceans, and uh, to just take care of the place. Um, leave the creation up to God, the creating. Uh, it says in Genesis 1, 3, it says, God saw all that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. So this is the sixth day uh, creation week. Uh, there's one more where he rests, and he says this is very good. So what he created in the original climate, he was very pleased. All right, very good. We're going to skip a little ahead in, in history, and we're going to go to the first major climate change. And it's not that far in the future, uh, but anyway, bear with me. We call it, and the Christians call it the fall, um, and it's in Genesis chapter 3. I would encourage you to read Genesis chapter 3. I'm not going to read it all, but uh, feel free to understand why is the world a mess the way it is uh, in some areas and just who we are. Why are we, um, why are we not perfect? And Genesis chapter 3 explains that. But I want to read Genesis 3, 17 to 18. Then to Adam, he said, this is God saying to Adam, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree about which I commanded you, saying you shall not eat from it. Here, listen to this. Cursed is the ground because of you, Adam and Eve. Adam, Adam takes the brunt of this. Um, cursed is the ground. Because of you, Adam, because you listen to somebody else and not me. In toil, you will eat of it. Now, now it's going to get difficult. All the days of your life, both thorns and thistles shall grow for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. Uh, that wasn't going to be a problem uh, with Adam and Eve uh, until they disobeyed God. And then things got, uh, well, cursed because sin produces death. And death is destructive. And now when Adam and Eve sinned, death came in with it. Uh, the wages of sin is death. And Adam and Eve now have to deal with a world that is cursed. And even it's their descendants um, have to deal with a world that's like that. So, All right, so there's your first climate change, is that the climate has now been changed uh, from perfect to imperfect because sin has entered the world and the it actually affects all creation uh, we'll, we'll find out later let's go to the second major climate change and it's the flood you can read this in genesis chapter 6 to 11. i'll let you read that i'll read some verses here just so we have an understanding um, it says here in genesis 6 uh, verses th 11 to 13 now the earth was corrupt in the sight of God. How quickly we uh, turn things around. And the earth was filled with violence. God looked on the earth and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh, all flesh, all of us, had corrupted their way upon the earth. Then God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. And behold, I'm about to destroy them with the earth. Our climate's about to change in this story right here, very drastically. Um, in this, and then it says in Genesis 7, 11 to 12, it says, In the 600th year of Noah's life, yes, people did live longer back then because of the genetic um, mutations weren't there. And people were able to live longer. We were supposed to live forever until... Our ancestors made a horrible error. And now we don't live as long uh, because of all the death is destructive and we are falling apart. Falling apart. Um, in the second month, on the 17th day of the month, on the same day, all the fountains of the great deep burst open and the floodgates of the sky were opened. The rain fell upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights that's a lot that's a lot so 
it wasn't just rain coming from the sky. Most of the water, and I got a video atta I'll attach to this at the uh, description or the comments where you can watch um, how uh, scientists have kind of figured out how this actually worked uh, from a biblical um, creationist worldview. And um, the water underneath the crust busted through the crust and it shot up so high uh, with all that pressure that most of the water coming down was probably the water that was sent up. And, um, the con and then this is when, when the world is flooded, this is when the continents were breaking up very quickly underneath. Another time, another story. But you can read it uh, for yourself. So um, yeah, so the floodgates of the sky were opened, the rain fell upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. Keep in mind, it wasn't just a 40 day, 40 night flood. It was a lot longer than that. In the 600, where did we go? 40 day, okay. And then the water prevailed more and more upon the earth, more and more, so that all the high mountains everywhere under the heavens were covered. Now, people might think, Everest? No, no, Everest wasn't there yet uh, uh, from biblical history. Uh, it was the mountains of that time that were covered. Um, prevailed 15 cubits higher. So the water is um, quite high. It's even over the mountains of that time period. Um, things like the mountain ranges, as, uh, as we know we taught in school, is that the continents would bang into each other and make these mountain ranges push up. Uh, the only difference from a secular worldview and a Christian worldview is the speed of, of that. So. Uh, we're taught in school that it takes millions and millions of years, if not billions, to have the earth the way it is. And from a creationist point of view, actually, it, it doesn't. It, it can happen very quickly when, when all the continent is soft and uh, still moving around uh, while uh, the waters are receding. Um, so we got water that is above all the mountains of that time which kind of is hard for a local flood. If it was just a local flood, all the water would just kind of, right, and go away and drain. Um, or it can't just go straight up while the mountain's here and just a wall, it, it doesn't work that way. Anyway, uh, that's Genesis 7. And then Genesis 7:24 says, the water prevailed upon the earth 150 days. That's how long the water stayed on the earth, 150 days. The whole flood uh, concept from when it started to when Noah actually got out of the ark was 370 days, I think. It was a long time that the water was there. Um, so, yeah, just, and, and the reshaping of the earth was happening under all that. And then the water starts to recede and carve and, and create and carve and create. So, all the, also, all the fountains of the deep and the floodgates of the sky were closed. So at some point, God closes it, and the rain from the sky was restrained. And the water receded steadily from the earth. And at the end of 150 days, the water decreased. All right. So we're dealing with a massive climate change right now. The Lord, uh, so, okay, so now here's some things about the second major um, climate change, according to me, my humble opinion. Um, now, this verse, what I'm about to read is that um, Noah has gives God a, a sacrifice and uh, God uh, enjoys the aroma of the smell of, uh, well, great barbecue. So, and the Lord likes it. So the Lord smelled the smooth aroma. That's where that's come from. And the Lord said to himself, this is more key. I will never again curse the ground on account of man. For the intent of man's heart is evil from his youth. How do I know that? Also, I'd agree with that. Yeah, it's called experience. And I will never again destroy every liberal thing. Thank you, Lord, as I have done. While the earth remains, and here's some keys on, um, on who's really in charge of our climate. It says, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. Man's not in charge of this. Not, not, we're, not, we're not affecting it. We, like I said, we can clean up the pollution, but uh, we're, not, we're not playing with the environment at all. Uh, God's in control of that. 
Um, here are some examples in history uh, of who is actually in charge of the environment. Um, let's, let's just consider, I won't read them all, like I won't go to the verses, but just consider, remember the 10 plagues. Who caused that? Man or God? God did. The Red Sea crossing. Who caused that? It wasn't man. God did. We're talking about some major environmental things here. You know, like you, <laughs> you split the sea. That's, there's some environmental impact to that. The 10 plagues. There's some impact to that. But God's in charge of that, not us. Uh, when he sent manna. Manna was everywhere. The manna, for those who don't know, was a uh, bread sent from heaven. Uh, it was bread that, uh, like a wafer type honey thing that uh, God uh, would send so the Israelites, when after the Exodus, would have something to eat. He controlled the environment that he would even send quail, like a lot of quail, uh, for them to have meat. And he also, for water, they were in an area one time where they didn't have any water, and the God who's really in, involved in the environment, uh, uh, he had water come out uh, when Moses spoke to the rock and it split. And you can actually find that in Saudi Arabia. Uh, this, these, are, like, these things are actually, uh, are, that's a real location. You can find the split rock of Moses uh, on Google Maps. And it's, it's really cool uh, that that place is there. Uh... So yeah, that, that's a lot of environmental impact. Uh, some more is when the crossing of the Jordan River happened quite often, uh, at least three times, uh, two for sure, three times, that uh, you, have the, you, you stop the flow of a river, the backwater is going to cause an environmental issue. And man's not in control of that. Uh, God is. Uh, so... Uh, famines that were prophesied. God told um, Joseph what was about to happen and in regards to the seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. Again, God was in charge of that. Uh, at times, he's withheld rain. Uh, in, some, in some stories, um, with, uh, I think it's Elisha or Elijah and Ahab. Anyway. And we have a, of course, um, uh, the main focus of the whole scripture is Jesus when he calms the storm. God calming the storm. When the disciples were in a, a storm with Jesus, Jesus is sleeping in the back. And the storm, and, and you have to understand that the storm was serious because these were fishermen, the majority of them. They knew what a storm was. They, they were quite worried. This, this storm worried them. Uh, for guys who are pretty experienced. And so they woke Jesus up and he basically kind of says, hey guys, come on, have some faith. And then he speaks to the storm and it all calms down. He's in charge of the environment, not us. We can pick up some garbage, that would be good. Um, so that that's just some examples of where God is actually in charge. Now we can go to the to the book of Job and you can read Job 38 and 39, the chapters there, where he's kind of quizzing Job about who's in charge of things. And I am going to read this because um, um, I think it's just important. So here we go. This is um, uh, Job 38, verses 22 to 38. And this is God letting Job know, hey, you're not in charge. I am. Um, and he says to Job, Have you entered the storehouses of the snow? Or have you seen the storehouses of the hail, which I have reserved for the time of distress, for the day of war and battle? Hmm. Here is, where is the way that the light is divided, or the east wind scattered on the earth? Who has cleft a channel for the flood, or a way for the thunderbolt, to bring rain on, on a on a land without people, on a desert without a man in it, to satisfy the waste, to satisfy the waste and, and desolate land, and to make the seeds of grass to sprout. Has the rain a father? Or who has begotten the, the drops of dew? From whose womb has come the ice and the frost of heaven? 
Who has given it birth? Water becomes hard like stone, and the surface of the deep is imprisoned. Can you bind the chains of the Pleiades or loose the cords of Orion? See, now he's even talking about up in the <laughs> up where the stars are, because he's the creator. He's the one who's in charge of all this stuff. Can you lead lead forth a constellation in its season and guide the bear with her satellites? Keep in mind that this this was written four thousand years ago, and yet all this um, astronomical stuff is being mentioned here. Like this is impressive. Um, how would they know that without telescopes and all the modern science? Um, do you know the ordinances of heaven or fix their rule over the earth? Can you lift up your voice to the clouds so that an abundance of water will cover you? Can you send forth lightnings that may go and say to you, here we are, who has put wisdom in the innermost being or given understanding to the mind? Who can count the clouds of wisdom or tip the water jars of the heavens when the dust hardens into a mass and the clods stick together? So, yeah, a little confusing, whatever. But basically, if you read that, you, it's basically God saying, I'm in charge. I've created all this. I'm in control. Even I know, it, like, even if we're messing up, God knows where, the state of the earth. We can't fix the heavens and the earth. We can't do that. You know, it seems like when it comes to governments and all this Paris climate stuff, uh, they get together. What is the solution? Tax the people. What's the outcome? Tax the people more. That's really what happens. Um, so we don't really change anything. Um, what's to come down the road? Okay, so that's been in the past. What's to come? We, we're dealing with climate change, um, and I'm explaining the biblical climate change that's occurring. But let's consider what's yet to come. Well, let's read Matthew 24. I would encourage you to read Matthew 24. I want you to read Mark 13 and Luke 21. And let me just read a few uh, verses from Matthew 24. It says, uh, this is Jesus talking, uh, God you will be hearing of wars and rumors of wars. That's an environmental impact. See that you are not frightened for those things must take place, but that is not yet the end. Hmm. For nation will rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Some translations is uh, ethnic against ethnic. Actually, that's probably what it actually is. So, And in various places there will be famines environmental impact, and earthquakes, more impact. But all these things are merely the beginning of birth pangs. I would like to submit that we are at the beginning of birth pangs right now. Uh, here's Matthew 24, 21, 22. It says, for there will be a great tribulation, that's uh, the seven years tribulation, such as not occurred since the beginning of the world until now, or never will. So people say that the tribulation may have occurred. Some people believe that, that it's already happened. But yet we have the words here that um, such as not occurred since the beginning of the world until now or never will. Unless those days had been cut short, and he's talking about at the end of the seven-year tribulation, no life would have been saved. That's quite the environmental impact. But, this, but the sake of the elect for those days will be cut short. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. So there will be some survivors, but quite the impact. And we're going to touch some more on those impacts when we get to Revelation. So uh, it, this is Jesus says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. So at some point, we're going to get uh, like a reset. Ooh. But this one will be from God, not from some group of people sitting around a table trying to cut up the world. Uh, heaven and earth will pass away. Hmm. That sounds very environmental. Uh, so that's, the, that's another one. Okay, so in the meantime, what's been happening um, around us? Why, why, is the, why is the earth doing that? Why are people sensing that there's a problem in the, in the earth that, uh, uh, and in our environment? 
Um, I will give credit, and I've said this in other videos, to people who sense there's something wrong. Um, but thinking that we're going to be able to fix our environment by via the atmosphere or earth, no, God's, that's God's, he's in control of that. We look at, we're little us, what can we do? Except tax the people. Um, here, here's something to consider. Um, the Bible does talk about in Romans 8, uh, it talks about the, the whole creation groans and suffers. And so here we go. It says, so this is what's been happening ever since. And this is what people are sensing. There's something wrong, but they're going about to, they're, it, they're going about it the wrong way. They're looking at it the wrong way when environmentalists are saying, hey, the world's messed up. It must be us, you know, and, and yet, no, it's not. It says, well, it is and isn't. You'll find out. <laughs> For the anxious longing of, of the creation, heavens and the earth, waits eagerly for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation is was subject to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it. Like, this has to go back to uh, the ground got cursed. The creation got cursed because of Adam and Eve. Um, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself also will set will be set free from its slavery to corruption. Yeah, the world is falling apart. Uh, it's slavery to corruption into the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and suffers. Yeah, and the pains of uh, and the pains of childbirth together until now. So, what this is just saying is that yeah. There is a problem, but that problem occurred way back um, in Genesis, in the beginning of the world, uh, when everything was perfect and then a, a very bad decision was made. So the earth is groaning, the earth is suffering, the, the creation that we see is, is acting up. So yes, credit to those who are sensing there's something different, but if you think little old us is going to fix the earth and the atmosphere, no. No. Um, anyway, uh, let's go to Revelation. And this is the third major climate change. So the first one was the fall, which is sin. The second one is the flood. And uh, we have had the effects of that. Now the third climate change um, is, is, uh, is still coming. But let's listen to this. You know, everybody's trying to save the world, save the world. And that's, let's read what God's going to do to this place in order to get people's attention because we are uh, we're ignoring him. And he's spent thousands of years trying to get our attention through maybe through word, maybe through visitation, maybe through prayer, uh, maybe speaking directly to some people. Um, again, it, things were written down as God revealed himself to people for guys like Daryl to uh, read and go, oh, that's, that's why things are the way they are. And uh, so um, I know that there's people who they mean well and they say, well, we have to save the planet. And I'm going, you can't. <laughs> and even if you could, God's gonna mess it up uh, really big here. Uh, so here we go. Um, and this, this all is happening, uh, what we're about to read is roughly through the seven year uh, tribulation that's going to occur when God takes his one final chance shot to try and get us to pay attention, to focus. But we'll also read what our response is here as a, as a group, as a people. So the third climate changes. There's a lot of changes during this one. This is Revelation. Read Revelation 6 and all the way to 9. It deals with the seven seals and what we're going to read about is like war, famine, death, and terror. Yeesh. All right, so Revelation 6, it says, uh, I looked when he broke the sixth seal, and there was a great earthquake. That's an environmental impact. And the sun became black as sackcloth made of hair, and the whole moon became like blood. That's going to be noticeable. And the stars of the sky fell to the earth. Interesting. As a fig tree casts its unripened figs 
unripe figs when shaken by a great wind, okay? So they're just going to fall down. And, and uh, you kind of say, well, come on, Daryl, that's silly. Well, you and I aren't the creator, are we? And he is, and he might be able to do that. We'll see, you know. Uh, the sky was split apart like a scroll when, th when it was rolled up. And every mountain, listen to this environmental impact, and every mountain and every island were moved out of their places. That's quite the earthquake that it can, it's going to move mountains and islands. Like some of them might even disappear. Uh, some might be shaken so that they're not so big anymore. Uh, Revelation 7, it says, After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth, so that no wind would blow on the earth and on the sea or on, the, or on any tree. All right, so um, wind is good. It moves things around. Uh, it can help pollinate because it's floating things around, and wind is good. If you have um, no wind for a period of time, that's nasty. Like some, sometimes you get those summer days and it's not blowing at all, like nothing. Or when sailors, when you used to rely on wind sail, uh, uh, <laughs> no wind would come and they're just sitting on this ocean, like no movement whatsoever. And they're suffocating. Wind is good. Up to a point. <laughs> then it gets too much. Um, so... Yeah, so God has these angels holding back at this one period of time. Um, then it gets released. Revelations 8, and we're still on the, the third climate changes recorded. Uh, Revelations 8, this has to do with the, se the seventh seal and the seven angels and their trumpets, I believe. Yeah, I think so. The first sounded, yeah, trumpet, and there came hail and fire mixed with blood, and they were thrown to the earth, um, the hail and the fire mixed with blood, and, and a third of the earth was burned up. Oh, well, here's some environmental impact that God is causing. And a third of the trees were burnt up, and all the grass, green grass, was burnt up. Yeesh, that's not good. Let's try to save the earth so this can happen. <laughs> the second angel sounded and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea. And that could be uh, John trying to explain a, um, an asteroid, you know, like a burning mountain of fire, you know. So, you know, he, he's, he's recording this 2,000 years ago, looking into the future, uh, that God is revealing what's going to happen in the end days. And John's doing the best he can with his words, with what his knowledge is to try and describe. So, like, a, yeah, an asteroid could be, is what is being uh, described here. A mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. And a third of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died and a third of the ships were destroyed. That's some major environmental impact caused by, by God. Um, and a third of the ships were destroyed. A third, the third angel sounded, oh, <laughs> third angel sounded and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs uh, of waters. That sounds like uh, possibly a meteorite again. The, oh, here's interesting. The name of the star is called Wormwood. You know what else is called Wormwood? A definition for it? Chernobyl. Chernobyl. I believe that means Wormwood. Little side thing there. And a third of the waters became Wormwood. <laughs> and many men died from the waters because they were made bitter. God's trying to get people's attention at this time. And there's quite the environmental impact that uh, is happening that we have no control over. Revelation 16, it talk, this now talks about the seven bowls of wrath. Let's just uh, go right to verses 2 and 4. It says, so, so the first angel went and poured out his bowl on the earth, and it became a loathsome and malignant sore on some people. Sorry, sore on the people who had the mark of the beast 
and who worshipped his image. Okay, so now we're dealing about halfway through the seven-year tribulation. The mark of the beast is there, uh, and that mark is uh, that people choose to take um, in order to worship uh, the Antichrist, Satan himself, um, or the Antichrist who Satan empowers. And um, God, a, bo a, a bowl is poured, and it has sores that is poured upon people uh, who worship the beast. Those who don't have, at that time, who are living, who don't accept the mark, um, they don't get attacked with these sores. The second angel poured out his bowl into the sea, and it became blood like that of a dead man, and every living thing in the sea died. That's a huge environmental impact. Then a third angel poured out his bowl into the rivers and into the springs of waters, and they became blood. Where have we heard that before? Oh yeah, the ten plagues. So this has happened before. And again, God caused those too. The fourth angel poured out his bowl upon the sun, and it was given to it to scorch men with fire. That's quite the burn, sunburn. Uh, ointment 1000. Men were scorched with fierce heat, and they blasphemed the name of God, who has the power over these plagues. And guess what we do as mankind, these people at this time. And they did not repent so as to give him glory. All these are things are happening. They know it's him doing it, trying to get their attention because everything else that he has tried so many people went, oh, I don't care, I don't care. I'm being me. I'm being me, doing my own truth. <laughs> and uh, so uh, they, after all this, they know God's doing it to get their attention, and they still will not repent. Isn't that amazing? The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river, the Euphrates, and its water was dried up so that so that the way would be prepared for the kings of the east. And that's from the east. That's to get together for a major battle. So um, uh, one of those bowls is going to be poured and the Euphrates River is going to dry up to allow easy access from one part of the world to, to where this big battle is going to be. Yeah. So interesting that people knew that God was doing it. it is the way God says this is what's going to happen and they're still not going to repent all right so let's go to Revelation 21 and I just want to read this it talks about a new heaven and new earth you can read that Revelation 21 1 says then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth passed away and there is no longer any sea isn't that interesting so we got all these climate change things happening. So here's basically the fourth major climate change, according to Daryl, in his own opinion. Um, it's the end. In the end, Eden is restored. We're full circle now. God's making everything new. And so, from my opinion, this is the fourth climate change, which turns out to be really good, because the last three were nasty. It says here in Revelations 22, it says, Then he showed me a river of the water of life, clear as crystal, coming from the throne of God and of the Lamb, that's Jesus, in the middle of its street. On either side of the river was the tree of life, bearing 12 kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were, were for the healing of of the nations mm, some healing qualities um, so. when was the first time we saw the tree of life well in Genesis in the garden where is it now now it could be a different one but where is it now now we get it in revelations and where it's supposed you know where it's protected <laughs> and so uh, God's got it um, so uh, this tree of life will have fruit and its leaves will be uh, healing properties for the nations. There will no longer be any curse. So this climate change, things get better. There will no longer be any curse. And the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it. And his bond servants will serve him. They will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads. That would be us, his, his followers. 
and there will be there will no longer be any night don't need a don't need uh, any night and there will no longer need have need of any light or a lamp nor the light of the sun why because the lord god will illuminate will illumine them no 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 this is na nasb translation <laughs> i'm struggling and they will reign forever and ever so you know interesting that uh skeptics would say uh you can't like the sun according to uh, the creation week shows up after a few days of creation and so they say well that's why i can't it's not it's not uh the bible's false because you need the sun the sun has to come first but if you read it the pro properly is that god created light first and then the sun comes later you know this isn't hard for god he can create light without uh, a source he is the source the bible tells us that god is light and so here we have it where there's no need for sun, there's no need for a lamp, there's no need for a nighttime reflection of the moon because God provides the light. He is the light. He doesn't have to have a moon and a, uh, stars and a sun to illuminate anything because he is the illumination. He is light. So he provides it. Anyway. So just a little side note there. Um, so here we go. I got, uh, I'm going to put on, um, I will put in the, uh, the comments or the description, a video that is pretty good on explaining. I like how they do it with regards to um, the flood and what, how the flood, the flood, <laughs> flood how the flood affected the climate and the whole earth and um yeah that's i'm gonna put that in i also i also gonna put in this name his name is dr john robson uh he has a youtube channel uh, i he also it's also a website called the climate discussion nexus it's cdn cdn the climate discussion nexus i'll put that down there he has a lot of videos that helps and they're short um, and it's very informative. Um, I don't know if he's a, uh, a Christian or not. I don't know too much, but I've enjoyed his videos um, and his explanation of, of uh, against false science, climate science, and true, real science. So um, the debate is not over, by the way. <laughs> it's not over. Just because a 97% of climate scientists or just scientists say that the debate's over. They're, no, no. You have, uh, he even does a video of that where you, you come to realize, oh, how did they get to the 97%? When you, when you learn a little bit more about statistics and how malleable they are and how you can play with them, you know, uh, 97 sounds great. But what if it was not, what if it was not all the scientists who agreed? It was just let's say you had a hundred scientists out of four thousand, and only ninety seven of them wrote something that said the words climate change on it. <laughs> they get it, it's interesting because the guy who came up with ninety seven percent of science uh, and who looked at all these papers, um, you find out that he was a bit s sketchy. And how he came up with that and it wasn't quite truthful that you know 97 percent of science, all science yeah it turned out not to be not to be true it's been debunked as well as al gore and his whole movie has been debunked and uh, a long time ago it's just that he's one of the elites you know and so the media is not gonna you know make him look bad he can do that all on his own um, here's a little other little side note. You ever notice that the people who are pushing climate change, um, I've noticed that a lot of them have multiple homes with like, their carbon footprint. We can't have a carbon footprint. Uh, and a lot of them, I remember the, the president before this one, uh, the guy after George Bush, try not to mention names that president uh was promoting climate change 
and that the the oceans are rising and uh, goes and buys a house on the coast what? <laughs> why would you buy you know and yet still in regards to climate change people banks and investors are still selling coastal properties that would take a long time to pay back they wouldn't do that if in 10 years uh, that the majority of the land is going to be covered and the coasts will be all changed and gone uh, no this, this, it, it's there's some funny science going on let me put it that way um, you may have read with me or when you read you might be a little concerned of um, well, some of this stuff is scary, especially what's going to happen in the tribulation period um, to uh, a lot of people who have decided not to follow Christ. And um, yeah, and just what it seems scary what God's going to do um, to the earth. Um, again, in like in other videos, I would encourage you don't be scared. God's in control. Give your life over to God. And uh, I'm not, when I say that, I'm not asking you to join a church, okay? And for you religious people hearing this, calm down right now. Um, what I'm asking you is to align yourself up with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Church can come later. Um, church is, the purpose of church is for us to get together and to learn and to support each other. But you don't have have to go to church to be a Christian. Actually, there's going to probably be a lot of people who are going to find out <laughs> a bit surprised that um, one day that church is going to be empty and they're standing around going, what the heck happened? Another story. Anyway, um, give your life over to Christ. Uh, there's not that much time left. Uh, looking at the scenarios around the world and compare them to Bible prophecy and just what is actually happening right now? I personally, Daryl Fraser, not believe there's that much time. Do I know how much? No, because no man knows the date or the time. My wife likes to say that the women know. That's why they were told to be quiet. Um, yeah, she sometimes she's funny. Okay. Um, so there, you know, there's a lot of nasty stuff that's going to happen in our near future. And how are you going to get through that? Are you going to do it on your own? Uh, are you going to do it in your own strength? Or are you just as a whole bunch of people going to get together and support each other? Or maybe here's a better idea. Why don't you ask the, uh, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the God who created the heavens and earth, who wants to walk through this life with you, why don't you invite him into your life? Um, love himself <laughs> you know this this guy would even die for you oh he did and he resurrected that's what beauty of that no need to fight him you know it, it's gonna get nasty uh, we got a new administration in and uh, down south um, Canada's been given over to socialism for a while now um, and uh, so our neighbors down south is uh, they're kind of going that route and it's not going to be good it's not going to be good my prediction video um, kind of talks, talks on that a bit um, I would encourage you to consider asking God into your life and let me just guide you through some things that are called like the ABC's of salvation uh, the A stands for admit, and it's important that uh, I, ha I came. I had to realize that I am a sinner, and uh, as we read uh, earlier with uh, what happened in the, the fall, on the first major climate change, um, our ancestors sinned, and we are affected by that to this day. The earth is groaning. God's creation is groaning. We are his creation. We're groaning. We're falling apart. What happens if you pass away? Do you know you have a tomorrow? Salvation is today. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. You have, you have no guarantee of a tomorrow. You're taking a risk that you have a tomorrow. There's a lot of people who do go to sleep and don't wake up. 
there are people with very serious health issues that um, very serious anyway I encourage you to consider this admit as it is written there is no one righteous not even one Romans 3 for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God all of us there's only one who didn't and that was Jesus and that's good because he was the perfect sacrifice none of us could have done it just him uh, to pay the penalty for our our sin Jesus paid that penalty it says in Romans 6 that the for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord after you admit that you know then believe if you declare with your mouth like speak it out Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead the Bible says you will be saved you will be saved saved from what well separation from God the one who created uh, time space and matter um, hell hell's not pleasant um, God is the author of life he is love himself not good to be separated from him uh, C is to call or commit uh, uh, it says for if it is with for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. That's Romans 10. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's a guarantee. Romans 10, 13. Jesus replied, very truly I tell you, no one, this is Jesus speaking, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. That's John 3. So we are born um, of of woman, but then there's a problem. All right, um, the sin the sin issue that happened uh, in Genesis chapter three in our history. But God says you also need to be born from above, and so we need to be born of the Spirit, which God sends from above. That's born again. Jesus answered, "I am the way, and the truth." and the life and here he goes again no one comes to the father except through me he's the only religious leader that i believe has ever claimed that and uh you're going to claim stuff like that you better back it up and uh history tells us and over two billion people's lives changed uh, kind of supports that probably more I'm, I'm just looking at probably what's just who's on the earth now when you calculate everybody together who has uh, followed him. Uh, Acts 4 says, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name. It's kind of like what Jesus was saying. I'm the only way. There's no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Jesus is the way. He is the way to being saved. And you don't have to worry about being fearful in today's times, just, just today's times. You know, January 2021. Um, I'm so thankful that I have God in my life. I don't know how I would have made it. Yeah, I have family. But they're just human beings. They can only give so much. And having the confidence that God is there for me. Providing, taking care. <clears throat> um, supplying. Giving me confidence. The promises, His word. He's never failed me in his word. Why would I believe that his word is going to fail in the future? And when you are the creator of time, space, and matter, I think you can keep your word. Yeah, I think you're pretty good then. Jesus calls us to repent for the forgiveness of sins and then follow him. That's what a Christian is. A Christian isn't nice, kind. These, these are attributes, good. Um... But a, a, a definition of a Christian is one who follows Jesus, Christ. We follow him. How do we know how to do that? Read the book. Read life's manual. It's not hard. People always said, oh, it's this, that. Daryl, don't follow. Don't read it. It's so full of baloney and whatever. And then I was always, I had my own opinion of the Bible by somebody else. And when I finally read it for myself, like uh, when I was 19, 20, and I'm going, this really isn't that hard, and it's pretty self-explanatory. 
yeah, there's some history stuff here, some culture stuff I have to learn. But in essence, it's, no, it's not hard. So, please consider that. It's not that much time left. The I believe uh, in regards to end times, all the pieces are on the, the board. And they're all moving. And uh, like Jesus said, know the signs of the times. And he gives us some examples. And I'm saying those signs are here. They're all here. And I know people uh, say, always say, well, people said that before. And they're going, yeah. And we know they're wrong. Why do I know I'm right? And I strongly believe this. Uh, the biggest thing is just uh, seeing the prophecies move so quickly. I'm not the only one who thinks this. Um, the big kicker for me is the technology. Uh, we've never had the technology in the past of events that people thought was, uh, you know, um, the end days. The technology that we have to communicate, um, to tag people, to surveil, valence people, um, to medicate people, to be obedient and submissive, uh, to, um, yeah, inform, deceive, all that technology exists today to put a mark on people so you know who your allegiance is to you know um, just look at the technology around no other time no other time all the pieces are moving well there we go that's my version of climate change uh, the climate started off pretty good and then the first climate change was the fall the second major climate change was the flood because of, of uh, mankind's uh, violence and sin nature. Sin just got, I'm sorry, I made this. I'm going to try again. Um, and then we have some climate change that's going to happen still um, that Revelations talks about and that Jesus talked about in the Gospels. Uh, some nasty times coming that he's going to affect uh, an environmental impact. And then the last climate change is when he restores everything back to how he intended it to be because he doesn't have to come up with anything new because at the end of the creation week he looked back and he said this is very good I'm very pleased so we're gonna get back to that at some point are you coming are you going to be a part of that I suggest that you admit you believe and you call on the name of Jesus and commit to him all right, people, less than an hour, barely. Please subscribe uh, if you, you know, want to. Uh, share this with people. Not everybody has to agree with me. We can all be adult and, and just say, hey, I don't agree, and I'm going to move on. <laughs> um, yeah, and like it. That would be really nice. Uh, until next time, do not be ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. Don't be afraid of the gospel. We'll get into it. Uh, first to the Jew and then to the Gentile. That's Romans 1.16. God bless you. Um, be careful. Don't believe everything you see and hear. Um, trust God. Trust his Bible. The word that uh, was made for us and uh, get into it. Ask God to show himself to you. He will, because he wants to. So, blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye-bye.